What's up, everybody? This is DJ Endo. I'm a DJ product specialist for Native Instruments and an instructor here at DubSpot. And today I'm going to show you guys how to beat grid tracks that are played with a live drummer or a classic disco tracks that aren't perfectly quantized to a grid. Now, recently I did a training with Felix the House Cat and David Morales, and both of them wanted to know how they can beat grid their classic disco tracks and vinyl rips. Now, since David Morales and Felix the House Cat both play strictly with controllers in Tractor, they need all of their tracks to be perfectly beat gridded so they can use Tractor's sync function with confidence. Now, a lot of these classic disco tracks and tracks that are played with an old drum machine or a human feel can't be perfectly beat gridded in Tractor. So, right now I have this Prince Controversy track loaded into a deck in Tractor. And I'm going to just quickly show you how I would go about beat gridding this track that isn't perfectly quantized. Now, if you want to learn more about how to beat grid tracks that are quantized, you can check out my previous video on the DubSpot YouTube, Beat Gridding and Tractor. So here's how I'd go about beat gridding this track that has a live drummer. First, I'd set a grid marker at the beginning. I'd turn the tick on and then I'd hit play. And I'm gonna try to match the metronome with the track. Now, I like to set a loop at the beginning and just kind of shift the grid left and right until the beginning is perfectly on. So that sounds good. So now that I have the beginning matched up with the metronome, then we're just gonna adjust the BPMs until the metronome is locked to the track. Sounds good so far. Now it's starting to drift, so I'm gonna change the BPM. And you can see that as the track goes on, it keeps drifting. Now, you know, I can click on this BPM and drag it around, but I know that as I keep playing this track, it's just going to keep dragging and drifting off. Now, if I wanted to, I could set more grid markers in the track each time it fluctuates off of the grid. And then I can shift the grid right after that grid marker. So each time I shift the grid, it's only shifting the grid after the previous grid marker that I set. As you can see, it's not pretty. And currently, in this version of Tractor, beat gridding songs that fluctuate in BPM is really hard and almost impossible to do. So the solution I found to get your tracks perfectly quantized on a grid is using the new Ableton 8 warping engine, which is really magical and will take your live tracks and put each beat right on the grid. So here's how you do it. The first thing I'm gonna do is hold control and click on this track. If you're using a PC, you can just right click on the track and say show and finder. So now that I have the track that I want to warp showing in my Mac finder, I can just click and drag this track into Ableton's arrange view into an audio track. Now, if you don't see the arrange view, you can click the tab key to toggle between the session view and the arrange view. Now you're gonna see that Ableton's analyzing this file and once it's done analyzing the file, it's going to put these green warp markers each time the beat goes off the grid. Now, if you don't see the window at the bottom with all the warp markers, you can just click on this arrow to show or hide the clip view. And this will show the waveform with all of the warp markers in it. Now, here's how I'm going to warp the track. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the beginning of our clip is showing. So to do this, we can just click on the left side of our clip You'll see this little bracket comes up, and I can just click and drag the beginning of this clip. I'm going to zoom out here, and I'm just going to drag this all the way to the left until I can't drag it anymore. That way, our whole clip is showing in the clip view. So now in the clip view, I'm going to hover over the top of our timeline so I get this magnifying glass, and I'm going to click and drag down to zoom in on the waveform. Now, as I zoom in, you'll see these little spikes in the waveform. These are called transients. 
and this marks where kicks, snares, or any other kind of percussive elements are in our waveform. Now, Ableton does this thing where it puts a flag over each noticeable transient, which marks the beginning of a sound such as a kick drum. So now that I know that this is the first beat of my song, I'm going to just double click on this little flag icon here, and I'm going to set a new warp marker at the beginning of this beat. So now that I have a warp marker set on this beat, I'm going to tell Ableton that this is beat one, measure one, of the track. I can do that by holding the control button down and then just clicking on this warp marker and I'm going to choose set one, one, one here. If you have a PC, you can actually right click on the warp marker and choose set one, one here. So now that I've told Ableton where beat one of measure one is. Now I'm going to control click again on this warp marker and I'm going to choose warp from here. Now Ableton's going to go through the track based on where our first beat is, it's going to shift each beat onto the grid whenever it fluctuates off beat. Okay, so now that I've warped the track starting at the one one, I'm just going to take this clip and drag it to the beginning of a measure so our metronome starts playing on beat one. I'm going to turn the metronome on by clicking on this metronome icon. And now I'm going to play the track and I'm going to listen to how each beat lines up with the metronome. Sounds good so far. I'm just going to fast forward through the track. Sounds good so far. Now it might not be perfectly on the metronome, but that's when we're going to use Tractor to get everything perfect. So I'm just going to check the track at the beginning, the middle, and the end. Sounds great. So now that we have this track perfectly quantized on the grid, now I'm going to export the audio from Ableton and make a new WAV file out of our perfectly warped track. Now before I do that, what I'm going to do is actually click on the clip and I get this bracket here and I'm going to drag the bracket all the way to the left so we get the beginning. Now the reason I do this is so we have this little space before the first kick drum. So that way we have a little space before we set our first beat grid marker and tractor. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the warping mode in Ableton. I like to use Complex Pro. So to set the warping mode, I'm just going to click on this drop down menu here and I'm going to choose Complex Pro. Now I'm going to make sure that my levels in Ableton are at a good level so the track is as loud as it can possibly be without clipping. So to do that, I'm going to hit the tab and I'm going to go to my session view and I'm just going to play the track and take a look at the levels. I'm going to go back to this view and just select a louder part of the track so I can get a good idea of the levels. I'm going to boost it a little bit. Okay, so that looks good right there. So before bouncing this as an audio file, I have to set the BPM of my session. So if I look down below, I can see that the original BPM is about 125.97. So I'm going to make the BPM of the Ableton session 126 BPM. I like to round it up to the nearest whole number. Now I'm going to export the audio. So before I export the audio, I just click on this clip so it highlights the whole clip and then I'm going to click file export audio video for the rendered track I'm going to choose master and I'm going to turn normalize off now normalizing will make the track as loud as it can possibly be without clipping but since normalizing can have a negative effect on the audio I like to turn it off and just get my levels right using Ableton's gain and then you can see I'm going to use a wave for my file type 
sample rate is 44100. I'm just going to make sure that all of these settings are set this way, and I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to name the file. I'm just going to call it Controversy. And I like to, at the end, put the BPM of the clip so I know it's 126. I'm going to hit Save. Now Ableton's exporting this audio, and what it's going to do is it's going to make a new WAV file that's perfectly warped on beat. So now that we've bounced our track out of Ableton, now I'm going to take this WAV file and I'm going to load it into a deck and tractor. So I'm going to go to my finder, find the file I just bounced out, and I'm going to drag it into a deck and tractor. Now tractor is going to analyze the WAV file and it's going to try to take a guess where the first beat is, and it's going to take a guess at what the BPM is. Okay, so here's our file here. So now that we have this track and tractor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the first beat here. I'm just going to zoom in, and I'm going to put a grid marker right at the beginning of the first beat. Now if you look at the BPMs, we know that we bounce this track as 126 BPM, so I'm just going to double click here and I'm going to change this BPM value to 126. Now I'm going to turn on Tractor's metronome, and I'm going to hit play. And while this track's playing, I'm going to shift the grid left and right until the metronome is perfectly locked into the beat. I'm just going to fast forward and make sure it's on beat throughout the track. Sounds great. Now I'm just going to click the lock button to save this beat grid to the track. And now that we have a perfectly beat gridded version of Prince Controversy, we can take this and play it in perfect sync with another track. Thank you guys for watching. This is DJ Endo. For more tutorials, check out dubspot.com. Peace. Welcome to Dubspot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.